In this video, I'm summarizing the integral test for convergence and divergence of a series. And I'll just take a second to post links to a video that goes into detail on a convergent series and a video that goes into detail on a divergent series. The purpose of this video is to summarize and then apply the integral test to something called a P series, which is very handy in the long run. So what I have here is a comparison of the two different types of integral tests. In the first one, I have some series, n equals 1 to infinity of f of n. And I suspect, for one reason or another, that it diverges. And so what I've done is set it up so that the area of these rectangles represents the series, and it's above a curve for the function f of x that I suspect will have an area that integrates to infinity. So if I write some things in here, the height of the first rectangle is f of 1, but the width is 1, so the area of it is f of 1. The height of the second rectangle is f of 2, but the width is 1, so its area is f of 2, and so on. And then if I put all those areas together, well, that's really just the infinite series under consideration. And it's going to be an area bigger than the area bounded by my curve. And so this is going to be bigger than the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx. And what I'm hoping here is that this integral blows up to infinity, thereby proving that the series blows up to infinity. So this is how we would prove divergence. In the second picture, I've got a series that I suspect converges, but I'm trying to prove it. And this time I set up my rectangle areas to the left of the curve. In other words, measuring the height at the right end of each subinterval. And again, my rectangle area is all put together. This one has a height of f of 1 and a width of 1. So that's f of 1. This rectangle area is f of 2. This one is f of 3, and so on. So the areas of all these rectangles put together is actually equal to the sum of the series. What I'm hoping to do is to show that the sum is less than some finite area under this curve. The first rectangle, though, is problematic because I have a function that's spiking to infinity at 0. And it's not much of a problem. You just have to remove that one rectangle. And so what I do is I say this is equal to f of 1, that's the first term in the series, plus the remaining terms. That's the sum as n goes from 2 to infinity of f of n. So in other words, this is the starting point for our integration. And I can see from the picture that that sum is going to be less than the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx. So I have less than f of 1 plus the integral from 1 to infinity f of x dx. Now what I'm hoping here is that when I do this improper integral, I get a finite number. And then showing that my sum is less than some finite number will prove that it converges. So to summarize the integral test for convergence, if the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx diverges, it automatically means that our series diverges. If the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx converges, it automatically means that our series converges. So a nice compact way of saying this is that this integral and this series are either going to both converge or both diverge. Let's put the integral test into practice by investigating what's commonly called a p-series. And that's a series of this form where I have 1 over n to the p. We've already looked at a couple of these. We looked at the harmonic series where p was equal to 1. That was the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n. And it turned out to diverge. We proved it by using the integral test. And we looked at another one where p was equal to 2. And we showed that that converges using the integral test. Now we're trying to nail down, in general, if I see something of the form 1 over n to the p, Will it converge or, di or diverge? And can we come up with a simple rule for what P has to be to decide which way it's going to go? So we're going to perform the integral test on this thing. And look at the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the P dx. And I can split into cases here. Now, We've really already shown that if p is equal to 1, that this thing is going to be divergent. But that was not another video, so let's just go ahead and treat that case real quick. The p equals 1 case. This would be the integral from 1 to infinity 
of 1 over x dx, which gives me the natural log of x evaluated from 1 to infinity, but the natural log of infinity is infinity. So this thing diverges when p is equal to 1. In other words, the harmonic series diverges. Well, let's, look at, <clears throat> let's look at what happens when p is not equal to 1. Then we would use the power rule to integrate this thing. So I have the integral from 1 to infinity, 1 over x to the p dx. That's like an x to the negative p. When I integrate it, I add 1 to the exponent. So it's going to be x to the negative p plus 1, or x to the 1 minus p divided by 1 minus p. And it's going to be evaluated as x goes from 1 to infinity. So when is this thing going to converge? Well, what I require is that x has some kind of negative exponent so that when I plug in a large number for x, I'm going to get a small result, in other words, a 0. So this converges if 1 minus p is negative, in other words, 1 is less than p, in other words, p is greater than 1. If I don't meet this requirement, if 1 minus p is greater than 0, then this up here is a positive exponent, and if I take an infinite number to a positive exponent, I get infinity, and it diverges. This diverges if 1 minus p is bigger than 0. In other words, if 1 is greater than p. In other words, if p is less than 1. So that's it. We've solved the p-series question. If I have a series of this form, 1 over n to the p, it converges if p is bigger than 1, and otherwise, if p is equal to 1 or less than 1, it's going to diverge. Real quick examples of how you apply this. All right, what we're doing right now is kind of building up a set of tools for quickly determining convergence. So this is just adding to our list of tools. If I see a series like that, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over square root of n, I need to immediately recognize I'm looking at a p series and that my p is equal to 1 half. And because that's a p less than 1, it diverges. Another example real quick just to wrap things up. If I look at this series, I'll just throw a 2 in the numerator to, to make it interesting. Um, now you could pull that 2 out in front of the thing. And I go, oh, well, this is just a p-series where p is bigger than 1, so I know it converges.